In this video, we're going to be covering the first stages of using the ME221 after fitting it to the car. This includes loading on the base map and doing some basic idle tuning to get the car up and running. So what we're going to be covering in detail today is going from the ECU fresh out of the box, loading on a base map using the supply tuning key and software. And to do that, we're going to need a couple of tools. We're going to need an RS-232 extension cable, as well as a genuine FTDI USB to serial adapter. Other ones are out there on the market. The cheap ones do not work. And as a result, we actually supply genuine ones on our website that are known to work with our ECU. Also, we need a Windows laptop, Windows 7 through to Windows 10 is absolutely fine. And as I said, the ECU has been fitted and is as supplied from the factory. That is loaded purely with a stock uh, test map that most likely will not run the engine. So it's very important that we go through and choose the right map from our USB key here, load it on and get the car up and running. So taking our FTDI cable, we can now plug this into the laptop and Windows will automatically pick up the drivers, Ooh, like so. Now, although we supply a USB key with the latest firmware and maps and tuning software, we do recommend that you download it directly from the Motorsport Electronics website. So going onto the website here, support, software manuals, and here is the Mighty, the tuning software, so you need this software here. And then also the next step, of course, is to choose a base map. If you go down here to the calibrations folder and click on that. And then we go to plug and play MX5. And then we go to OEM maps because this is a standard car. And this one is a 1.6, it's a 1990 1.6. So we're gonna choose the 1.6 OEM map, click on that. It pops up with the actual file, but we need to click up here for downloads. So we'll download the file as such. It says, do you want to open or save? We're going to save it. And we're going to save it to the desktop. So let's go to save as, and we're going to pop it straight onto the desktop here. Like so. Okay, and that's now downloaded. So let's close all tabs. Now, if we go ahead and turn the ignition on, this car has an immobilizer, so key in, in there. Turn the ignition on. And then we go to Mighty after installing it. We can see here that it connects to the ECU and it downloads the current file that's on the ECU, which of course is a standard test map. So it won't give you good running. So we are going to load in our latest map file. So we go to Calibrations, load calibration file, go to our desktop, and here you can see the file we've just downloaded. We're going to double click that. And on the, pop, on the load calibration wizard, we're going to click load calibration. And it's important that we do only tuning data, which is the default setting. We click load calibration. It says that we're going to erase what's on the ECU. We hit yes. And as you can see, that now downloads to the ECU. Like so. And then it reads back from the ECU. And there we go. There's our map file loaded. Now it's a case of turning the ignition off back on and then going to file and connect and it will automatically reconnect and connect up so before we go ahead and start the engine there's a few things to take note of this is the start screen on in here you can see loaded from the map you can see the engine size the injector size and of course if you have for example rx8 injectors you would change this to 420 cc's and some other settings like what the trigger pattern and the cam pattern are we can then also take a look at the sensor calibration screen. Now this shows us what's going on with the sensors and so on. So manifold pressure, which is built onto the ECU itself, should be reading about 100 when the engine is off, which it is here. And you also have things like the coolant temperature, reading 37 degrees centigrade because the engine was running earlier, and the intake temperature here at 19 degrees. And after that, we can see the mapping screen, which again shows the sensor data, as well as the base map here has been loaded successfully. So let's go ahead and try and start the engine. And it actually starts and idles incredibly well from the base map. 
We can see here that the idle target, because of the temperature, is 1100, 1200 RPM, based on the temperature and the target RPM. And you can see indeed that the closed loop idle control is making it reach that target. We will be doing further videos on idle control to show some of the problems you can have with idle control and some of the settings that you might need to change to get your car running perfectly. For example, a common question is why do the crosshairs look like this? Reading 200 higher, that is down to air conditioning. When you turn air conditioning on, the system will refer to the air conditioning settings and raise the RPM by 200. If I turn the air conditioning off, you'll see that the idle will indeed then drop back to where it's supposed to be. So that's one thing that, that people ask about. So with the engine up and running and idling away and warming up nicely, we can have a look at the mapping screen. Now this car doesn't have a wideband installed, which means we're not going to be able to accurately tune this and this data actually means nothing, nor is it being used in any corrections at the moment because our lambda control is disabled. If we go back to the mapping tab, when we move the throttle we can see the crosshairs move around on the VE map. We will go into details in other videos about volumetric efficiency and what it actually means, but for now, consider it simply a fueling map. The higher the number, the more fuel the EC will put in at that point. And as you can see where the crosshairs are now at idle, at 1100 RPM and 30 kPa of load, it's putting in 3.8 milliseconds of fuel. I can use Q and W to increase or decrease the fuel at that point, and you can see how the injector pulse is changing accordingly. Also, it's worth noting that this map is based on manifold pressure. So down the left-hand axis here is the primary load. 100 kPa, as we showed earlier, is what you would expect to see with the throttle wide open. And on this car, if I stamp on the throttle, you'll see the, the crosshairs move up to the 100 kPa mark and move along. As such. The numbers above this represent when under boost. For example, 150 kPa represents 50 kPa above atmospheric otherwise known as half a bar of boost. 180 could be also said to be 0.8 bar of boost. As you can see, although this is an OEM map for a naturally aspirated car, we do actually have boost mapping there. So if you were to change the, the if you were to fit a turbocharger, you could then sim and change the injectors, for example, RX-8 injectors, you could change the injector size here and it would automatically compensate for boost. So as a base map, it would probably be quite safe to drive of course, you would recommend visiting a rolling road or at least using a wideband AFR gauge to check that the air-fuel ratios are indeed safe. Also, under the mapping screen, you have the ability to view this table as a 3D table. And that allows you to see for any hills and troughs in the map. Ultimately, the VE curve should look quite smooth and it should also represent the torque curve of the engine. Again, for modifying fuel cells, you can select and you can use Q and W to modify the cells accordingly. You can also do things such as interpolate between fields by right-clicking and using the different menus from within the software. Other areas on the software which are quite important include things like diagnostics. It's quite a simple tab. With the engine running, it's showing you that the system is synchronised, the RPM, and also that we're receiving signals from both the crank sensor and the cam sensor. On the Mark 1 and X5, the both sensors are combined within the CAS. You can still see these numbers increment when the engine is running or when cranking and also loss sync count should be a very low number, if not zero. If this number is constantly increasing when cranking, it means you have noise in your ignition and crank signal system. Another important feature of the ME221 ECU is the ability to log. Now, when doing diagnosing or, or for reviewing things after mapping, we may ask you to send us a log file if you have issues. And to do that, it's a case of configuring by going to the logging menu, configure, choose a directory where you'd like the log file saved, choose the parameters that you'd like to log, generally you would request for all, press OK, and then just go to logging and start. You'll see, do you'll see down here that logging is started. Once you've, once you've done some driving and tried to represent any issues you might have had, then it's a case of going to stop, and the log file is automatically saved and placed in the folder that you've chosen. Another area of the Mighty is the ability to customise the layouts to your liking. So let's say, for example, you'd like to add a new tab that focused on not control. Simply add new, type in not control as the tab name, and now you can simply add things from the left-hand side here. You can add a settings window from the left here. You can add tables from the left. And you can drag and locate these, and also read out, and drag and locate these as you see fit, as well as resizing them 
to your liking. And of course, when you move between tabs, you can go back to them and they're saved. So you can really customize how you want to use the Mighty. I hope the video has been informative on the basic settings of the ME221, how to load a map on, and how to do some very simple manipulation with the ECU. We will be covering more videos on, on various sections of the ECU, such as idle control, boost control, and lambda control, and these will follow soon. But in the meantime, if you have any questions or queries, feel free to pop a comment in the section below. Cheers.